Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the In the Paint Show presented by Ball is Life, episode 155. I'm here with Chelsea Hopkins and Ani Umana going on at it another week. We took a week off. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of exciting things coming up, but we're back at it. We're, we're glad Chelsea's able to join us. She has a very busy schedule. Chelsea, uh, where are you guys at? I know you guys are practicing a lot. Games are back on. So what's the latest? Uh, we started playing again. We had a game. Uh, actually last night. So we are back to two games a week playing Monday and Thursday, pretty much through the rest of the season. Uh, We have two, uh, the way our league is set up, we've talked about it a little bit before, but basically there's 10 teams. uh, Everybody does a home and away. So that's considered like first round and second round. And then after that, they kind of split the teams. They take the top six and they take the top four. So the top four is basically competing to stay in the league. Like yeah. if you if you finish last, you basically get relegated to second division or whatever. And the winner of second division will come up to first division. So if you're yeah. one of those bottom teams, you're basically just competing to not be last. And if you end up being in the top six, like we are, my team has already solidified the top six. Uh, you do another round robin of five games. So everybody plays each other once. Then they take the four best records. And that is for the semifinals um on to the finals so that's kind of where we're at right now we have two regular season games left we'll have that round robin of five games in the top six which my team has already clinched the top six and then we're basically just fighting to get in the final four now so um it's pretty close amongst the three four five and six seeds so it's really going to come down to these next several games um in the next two weeks to kind of determine if if my team will make the semifinals so that's it Great, great. Ani, what's the latest, bud? How is UIL going? Uh, how's everything in Texas? Everything's good in Texas. You know, just playoff basketball. Sure. You know, we 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 getting after it. I'm going to catch some games tonight. Uh, been a lot of ups. Been a decent amount of upsets. Uh, it's just been a crazy time. Playoff basketball in uh, Texas is a crazy time, but it's fun. Great, great. Yeah, no, uh, this week I had uh, only three newcomers to the Fab 50, so check it out uh, when you get a chance and ball is life. Dot com. Uh, one of them I had to put now in Kimball uh, in 5A. Uh, right. Ani only the loss to Dallas Carter and overtime into Wheeler. Wheeler, obviously, with Isaiah Kohler, one of the best players in the country, is, is rolling in, in Georgia right now. And uh, they came in at, at 44. Does that does that make sense in your opinion? Yeah, you know, I think that, like you said, they only lost two games. They've okay. uh, they've had a quality schedule. They're winning. They're projected to potentially win the state title in 5A, and they're rocking and rolling. I talked to the coach, Nick Smith, yesterday. We just been talking about the road to uh, getting there, and he's like, man, Ani, this shit doesn't get any easier, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're kind of going through it, but uh, he's been real happy with his team, especially last year where they thought they were going to win it, and then they gave up a lead and lost to Beaumont United last year. So, But, yeah, I think the ranking's fair. They've had a really good season. Um, it hasn't really been talked about as much in Texas about their season, but they've been they've been doing a great job. Yeah, exactly. They're kind of coming up from the rear, obviously, with Beaumont and six six A. That kind of clears that pathway, and uh, Beaumont's rolling. Uh, they're they're uh, up pretty high in the Fab Fifty now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Lake Highlands in the six A. Maybe they're the slight favorite. They're up to number nine. At Beaumont, which they almost got upset it uh, on Friday. They almost lost Friday. They almost lost Friday, Lake Highlands, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And they keep rolling. Well, again, they're not going to drop if, they, if they're if they winning. Uh, not too many new teams, but some teams ended, uh, already ended. Nevada's ended, Chelsea. Durango won yeah. their first state title since 1996. Uh, Gorman didn't make the Final Four. Uh, you know, I was at the game where the Durango eliminated them. Uh, yeah, it's just changing, you know. Kudos to uh, Durango. They lost their coach, uh, Chad Beaton, like right at the end of the regular season. He, he stepped down and, and – System took over and they did a great job. Tylen Riley, uh, great guard they have. He played for the Las Vegas Knicks AU team. He, he did great and led him to the state first state title in 25 years. So shout out to Durant. Let's we'll see if they get in the Fab 50. They have some losses, but again, n- until everybody's done, you still have a chance to move up. So right, you know, teams will fall, they'll drop. Um, last night, Monday night, we're shooting this on a Tuesday. Uh, Paul the Six lost to St. John's. Yeah, I saw about two. PHC title game. Of Daquan Davis drove drove to the lane, made a layup with like three seconds. They didn't call timeout, and then uh, Paul the Six had a chance to 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 win it or 
yeah, take the win at the buzzer because it was a two-point game, but the, the three-pointer rimmed off. So kudos to St. John's and Coach Bean. Coach Bean is is, is uh, fighting, I believe, a form of cancer, so I know his players really want to win for him. Uh, they came out and won the Torrey Pines uh, San Diego during the Christmas, so they, they were a really good team, and uh, they, they got the championship. Again, those teams are seasons are not over, so we'll, we'll see how it rolls, but – a lot of things have happened, Chelsea, in basketball. A lot of things have happened in the last few weeks. Again, we took a week off. Uh, I know you had some opinion or you had some thoughts on Deion Sanders, a new coach of Colorado. Uh, Deion has the spring game sold out. I mean, people are talking about Colorado football, but, like, he made some comments about recruiting and what he looks for. What did he say, Chelsea, and what do you think about it? Uh, just something along the lines of when he's looking to recruit a quarterback, he's looking for – a guy that comes from a two-parent home, um, smart, because, you know, it's a yeah. cerebral position, uh, you know, high GPA, uh, yeah. something along those lines. But when he's looking for, a, I think, defensive linemen or offensive yeah. linemen, Line. that he's looking for, um, you know, a guy that comes from a, a single-parent home that's hungry yeah. and, you know, uh, kind of from the hood that's, you know, starving yeah. to get there uh, to create a better life for their family. So, sure. um, you know... <laughs> Dion is very vocal about certain stuff. And, and, you know, I've actually kind of heard that mentality before. Like, I don't sure. think he's the only person that, you know, thinks that way. And I think sometimes Dion is kind of just saying the quiet part out loud. <laughs> yeah. um, my biggest thing with, with stuff like that, well, he didn't mention race. So he didn't necessarily say a black kid or whatever. But because of different stereotypes that are already generated, that's kind of the assumption. You know, so yeah. people were trying to give them a pass because they're like, well, hey, his son's the quarterback and, you know, he's black and, you know, like it's not a race thing, but it 100 percent is a race thing. And I just would like our people to just be more careful with our words and and, and how we feed into certain stereotypes, even sure. if there is truth. To it. Like there is a lot of stereotypes that there's there's truth to it, whether you yeah. like it or don't, you know, so I just Dion just says too much sometimes in my opinion and it's not even that what he's saying is wrong it's just yeah. do we have to say it i don't know that's kind of just was my takeaway when i first heard it what about you ani yeah no I, what he said is what i've believed and heard from other college coaches <laughs> before uh geared towards more on the basketball side it just shouldn't have been said right <laughs> and uh i just i was like okay Dion, that was just inappropriate like, <laughs> you, you know, at the end of the day, like you, you're going to get the best player you can get, regardless of the household. Like if the kid's tough or if he's soft, if it's from a single parent household or two parent household, like, I, I don't know. It just I hate when that stuff gets said, because like you said, then it, it goes through the stereotypes. Of, oh, he's talking about a single parent house. So he's talking about a, an African-American male like or, you know, what I'm saying like it goes it feeds into that. And I, I, just, I just don't like that. Like I, I didn't like what he said. I just thought like you just get just get the best player you can get. Get a player that fits your program, regardless of what that sure. looks like. Um, yeah. But I hear I hear it being said a lot by coaches, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. It's just disappointed. That's how people think. Correct. Yeah. And and you know, Dion has the the floor, so to speak. He's the most talked about person in college football right now, probably even more than our guy Nick Saban down in Alabama. Like people are talking about him, so. What I got out of it is, again, he's talking like locker room talk and he's sitting there in a panel or on a show or a podcast or whatever it is he's doing. And when he says it, then his co-hosts or the people that invite him on the show are kind of like laughing. But are they laughing like nervous laugh or are they laughing because they agree with him that, like you said, it's so it, it, it doesn't it's not a good look for everybody involved, you know, for for those guys, because as soon as he said it, they started laughing. Right. Right. So like to you guys, you both are African-American. You might be like, hey, well, what's all that about? Or like, that's the first thing, you know, you're putting them in kind of an I don't know if they feel uncomfortable or they just felt like, again, it's Dion. So maybe they're like, you know, he has a lot of stature in football. So they just kind of gave a like a little laugh. And I, I know they weren't mm -hmm. laughing at him or making fun of anybody in particular, but right, it just right. makes it uncomfortable. Because it's just like mm -hmm. some people did mention that, like, I don't like that those non-white, uh, I'm sorry, non-black uh individuals on the show were laughing as soon as he said it you know what i mean so mm -hmm. again to avoid it it's like maybe it doesn't need to be said you know right I mean? exactly so it, it goes to what you guys are saying but speaking of inappropriate and a lot of things that happen in in, in how their perception inappropriate we got to talk about alabama basketball 
and the Brandon Miller situation with, with Nate Oates. Uh, we'll start with you, Ani. You know, first of all, obviously we, we've talked about this because we talked about a shooting down in New Mexico State. Right. And we're right. like, is this rampant? Is this happening? And, and, and guns are part of American mm -hmm. culture. Like there's guns all over. There's guns in campuses. There's guns in high schools. There's guns in colleges. <laughs> so we know this things can happen, but like, in your opinion, what should have happened when this came out? Oh, obviously, Alabama kind of knew a little bit of this detail that Brandon was uh, a person who either had the gun in his car and delivered it to the person who was the perpetrator or he told him to get it on a text message. So what's your opinion there, Ani? And like, uh, should the player been suspended? Should, should player and coach been suspended? Both or, you know, what, what's your opinion there? Uh, I don't think the player should have been suspended. I don't think Brandon should be suspended, especially when we got the information that, you know, he was giving the guy, the shooter, back his gun. Now, should he, like, now you ask, well, what, should he been out at one something in the morning or so-and-so? Okay, like, yeah, you can ask that, but he was giving the guy his gun back. He didn't know that the guy, the guy was going to go kill somebody, <laughs> right? Like, so he shouldn't have been suspended for that. I just think it's a learning lesson for just athletes and players. Like yeah. we all talk about, like sometimes you, that's why you don't have to be out that late, <laughs> right? Like nothing good happens when you're out late, regardless if, you know, you're just giving yeah. me and someone to give them something or whatever it is, but he shouldn't be suspended for it. I just think that, uh, you know, after the game, you know, the the second game, I think it was against Arkansas where they did the pat down. Right. Like, I know they've been doing every game, but that should have been something that should have been talked about. Hey, I don't think we should be doing that, guys. Like after everything came about, came out, I would wish that like some of the stuff that was said <laughs> would have, you know, they would have thought more about what they said and did. Right. It just sure. it didn't it didn't make the program look good. Um, but I don't think he should, Brandon shouldn't have been suspended. Sure. Chelsea, how about you? Or what are your highline thoughts about it? And then the, the aftermath? Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly the context of everything. Like I heard he delivered it, but I don't know, like the details. Did he say, Hey, Ronnie, go grab my backpack and bring it to yeah. me. Like, you know, like, I don't Correct. really know you know, anything like that. But but I, I agree with Ani that I don't think that he should be suspended. Um, there was an investigation. He was cleared. You know, it, it's just funny how we try to scrutinize, you know, certain players or certain things and, you know, kind of make them really be more than what they are. There was an right. investigation. He was, right. he, he was cleared. You know, I, I don't want to say life goes on because I, I always want to show sensitivity and compassion to the young lady that lost her life. Like that sure. goes without saying. And that's where I think Alabama has dropped the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Ani mentioned the pat down and just just the sensitivity. It was a very unfortunate situation, but a young lady was killed. So the optics of everything, especially having my program be under a microscope, I'm going to tell the guys like, hey, some of this stuff we have to just tighten up because this is the situation that we put ourselves in. So I, I don't like the whole pat down scenario, but Brandon Miller is, is not guilty here. He, he's been cleared. He's a young, talented young man, which is why his name is even coming up because right. he's, you know, high profile and he's going to be in the NBA. And, you know, a lot of people would rather see him, you know, lose out on 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 an opportunity because of, you know, what happened. And he, he's not deserving of that. So I, I hope that Alabama would just be a little bit more sensitive to, you know, just the situation itself. But other than that, Brandon Miller should be able to play and, you know, to – to, to see how he's performed even after with all the scrutiny and them yelling, lock him up and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like <laughs> right, right, it, it's right. crazy. He, he's yeah. And I, yeah. And go ahead, Donnie. No, I just add to that. Like I what's kind of disappointing to me a little bit is that we're not even, I, there's, there's not an, we're not talking about the woman that the, the woman that got shot and killed. <laughs> right. We're just yeah. talking about Brandon Miller. Like let's, let's honor her and her life. Like let's talk more about, it's unfortunate that she died, but I just feel that first off, people know Brandon Miller more than they know about her <laughs> or there's yeah. nothing really about, her. they don't like, there's there's someone that actually killed the girl. <laughs> right. Like let's, let's, let's scrutinize him. I don't like to bring up people that kill to be honest with you. Like, I don't like to bring up their names because I think sometimes they do it out of infamy. Right. Uh, but I just would wish like there was more talking about the the girl and her life and how you know how unfortunate it was instead of us talking about 
Brandon Miller, this Brandon Miller, that like, you know, I just think there's, we, let's shed some light onto the act, the person that lost their life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Then about, you know, Brandon Miller making jokes about him or this, that, and the third. I, I, I just think the tension is, is, is in the wrong place. Sure. Agreed. Yeah. I, uh, I'm on along the lines of you guys too, but I, what Chelsea mentioned about, we don't really know the details. Cause like you say, says, Dog, bring me my my thing, dog, or bring me, you know, bring me right. my. So, was it already in the car in the trunk? Because that's where he leaves it, and he just drove the car. Was it in a backpack? And he never. Because people are like, oh, he brought it, but does that mean he touched it and grabbed it and put it in a holster yeah. and brought it? Like, <laughs> right? We don't know that. We don't really know that. He just could have been like, or maybe Brandon's like, you know, I I don't really like that thing around me. Let me just take it to him. Mm -hmm. We don't know his intent. That's another thing. Like, we don't know what Brandon, We nobody's interviewed him or got anything from him. That's what I would say. Like, maybe he felt really bad about the thing. You don't know that. And, like, from what I gather, he didn't know the girl. For sure, Brandon didn't know the girl. I don't know how much the perpetrators knew, knew the young lady, but mm -hmm. Brandon really didn't know her. So maybe when all that information came public, meaning, like, they, they did an investigation and there was going to be, like a pre-hearing or nothing, maybe he felt relief that was out. Like, see, like, because maybe people around score said, like, oh, was Brandon involved? Did he do you know what I'm saying? So when the when the when the information became more detailed, like it cleared him because everybody's like, oh my God, how's he playing with that pressure? Maybe the pressure was off of him. Like, told you guys, I didn't do it, you know, like you don't know that detail. So I'm I'm along the lines of Chelsea, like we don't know the whole situation. So, of course, he's going to go through the chance. He's going to go through the road games where, like, people are badgering him and, and pestering him. We, we get that. But, like, that may be his solace. That may, Basketball might be the place where he feels, like, comfortable. Like, I, I would assume, like, you know, a place where people don't pass judgment where they are right. going to be under hush tones and whispers for a long time now, probably until he gets drafted. Got all this stuff's going to come up again when he gets drafted. We're going to yeah. do the draft show. It's all going to be out in – how much is he going to drop? How much is he going to – does this team not like him? Does this team like him? All that's going to come up again. It sucks, but it's all going to come up again. Right, absolutely. It's all going to come up because he's, he's, he's going to be drafted, you know, wherever, wherever he goes in the first round in the lottery, and we'll see how that affects him. So, yeah, that, I, I personally think that Coach Oates should have been suspended, to be yeah. honest with you. Just yeah. spend him like – you're the leader. You're the one getting paid millions of dollars. You got to have control – what are your players doing – yeah, <laughs> you make a couple of bad decisions. You, you get you're getting suspended two games to send a message to the community, send a message to the team to the, like the adults. Uh, not that Brandon is not adult or the other guys on the team, not adult, but like they're the ones that's supposed to be setting the example. So I would have suspended mm -hmm. him for a couple of games and say, Absolutely. hey, get it together. You know, just hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so but I, we get what they're doing. This is a big business. Uh, obviously, Alabama's having their best season in, in maybe ever, but we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, it's going to be watched closely, but uh, you feel for the young lady, and it's an yeah. unfortunate situation, but that's who I think should have been suspended is Coach Oates for a few games at least. So, you know, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, our, 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 uh, some of our listeners wanted to get my opinion on the CIF su Southern section and the CIF. Like, state. and Ani, when you guys get in a state, it's it's, – it's, <laughs> Loser, go home, right? Like right, it's right. one bracket deal in California. It's not like that. No, people can't even understand it. They're like, "What is the section?" I thought he lost. And then there's a there's a pool play for the best teams in the Open. They have a pool play system. Corona Centennial came out and won that. Uh, their pool and St. John Bosco took a loss but won their pool. So in their pool, a bunch of teams were two and one. But they're based on the point system, based on the they seedings. Won. They're the team that advance, and then they played at the Honda Center, which the Clippers sometimes play out in the Mighty Ducks. And I'm sure you guys saw the clip at the end. LZ Harrington is trying to get set up a shot, and he's on the right-hand side. And it's a tie game, and he picks up his dribble. I probably would have called timeout right in that instance when he, picked, right. he had nowhere to go. So he threw a cross-lane pass. Aaron mm -hmm. McBride picked it off. Dunked and now it. we're looking. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, oh, he's going to dunk this. So then it's like four seconds. He Tips it to himself out, and he already has really long strides. Aaron McBride Strider, he's, yeah. not, a, he's not a great uh, agility guy. He doesn't move left and right well, but if you get him on a straight line downhill, dude, he's like a monster of Mack truck. You know, he takes one dribble past half court, two steps, and dunks it literally at the buzzer. And it was like, did this just happen? 
So Centennial won, and uh, the, the crowd went crazy. Their fans went crazy. Their bench went crazy. I thought maybe even their bench went onto the court right before, like, the zero mark, you know? <laughs> but it happened so fast, and the, the game was over, and they move on to the, to the open regional, and uh, St. John Bosco moves on, even though they lost by two points and they lost at the buzzer. People, So I don't think the country understand how it works, so – when when I when they go to the state, which is the regional, it's it's north south, which I think should keep. But we have five divisions in the open, so we have six. So it's 16, 16 times five. Do my math. Is that eighty? Right, eighty teams. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, plus the open. So I would say get rid of some of the fluff. And now I'm giving my spill of what it should be is get rid of some of the fluff. So get rid of the last uh, sixteen teams. Sorry, you didn't make you didn't win your your sectional. You don't go to state, right? So just make it one division. So winner take all in the regional after the sectional. So that was a huge game, right? Winning that yeah. sectional title is big. Uh, and there's other big sections, you know, the Sac Joaquin section, Modesto Christian won, St. Joseph won the central section, St. Augustine won the San Diego section. So, again, there's 10 sections. Those teams should get in their section champs. And then just seed it. So Corona Centennial is the best team in the state. They get the one seed and go to 64. Right, so one plays sixty-four, two plays sixty-three, and just seat it down. Everybody plays, so everybody knows what they're playing for. Because right now, everybody slot. If you're Notre Dame and Notre Dame has Caleb Foster, and Notre Dame has Dusty Stromer, they didn't know if they were going to the open or they were going to be the number one seed in D one. So they okay. ended up being the number one seed in D one. So mm-hmm. again, if you're the number one seed in D two, that just means you weren't the sixteen seed in D one. So what it, it loses some of its mm-hmm. luster as you go down. Yeah. So just make it a one bracket thing, and it could be done in two weeks. So it would be the round of 64 today on Tuesday as we're shooting the pot. Thursday would be the round of uh, 32, right? Mm -hmm. And then the round of 16 would be on Saturday. And then the final eight would be next Tuesday the 7th. And then you go to the final four, which would be Friday, which would be the 8th or the 9th, right? And Mm then 10th, 11th is the state title. So it would be the 10th. So. Tuesday is the seventh. It would be on the tenth. So you have a final four, and and the north sometimes is a little weaker, right? Because it's a north versus south. South has won the open every time, but one time when the north had Ivan Rab at, at O'Dowd, and 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 Ivan Rab went on to the NBA, but uh, they won the championship. So the south has been dominating. So then you recede it if if the if it's unbalanced, you recede it once they get to the final four. So it doesn't have to be north versus south. It could be south versus south or north versus north. Mm-hmm. Right? right, one place four, two place three, and then the winner play on Saturday the eleventh. That just be simple, sixty four team yeah. bracket, and, and get it done. So again, mm-hmm. just to revamp real quick, they would play today sixty four, Thursday thirty two, Saturday sixteen. The lead eight would be next Tuesday the seventh, and then have the final four in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Simple, mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody would know what they're playing for. One winner take all. You're trying to win the whole thing, yeah, right. and then you would feel really good about your section championship because right now you, if you lose in the sectional. You say, great, we'll get that team back in the regional. We'll beat them. You yeah. know what I mean? And it mm-hmm. happens. So what's – people can't follow it. Again, this goes to, to make it a better event is, is the rest of the state would be more interested. And then you would love to see a big upset like can a, you know, can a, a five lose to a 60 or 61, right? Like right. when they knock them off. It would be a big win for that school. Even though that school might get dusted in the next round, to say they knocked off that team would be a really, really special thing. Yeah. So, that that that's what I think it should be. So there could be one champ at the end. Because right now, when I go to state finals at the Golden One Center in a couple of weeks, there's going to be six champs, open and and one, two, three, four, five. So mm-hmm. it, it loses a little bit of its luster. Again, it was great game Saturday. So hope they make some adjustments and hope they fix it. So that's people wanted me to talk about that. You know, obviously you can go to CalHighSports.com, follow my rankings. We've been, you know, we're doing the state top twenty five for a long time. So you can go check those out on CalHighSports.com. But let, let's let's move on to our next topic. Uh, wanted to thank everybody for listening in. in. Obviously, you can check us out on Spotify, uh, iTunes, and and whatnot. Everybody got into our goat conversation. They kind of liked this. We appreciate it. Obviously, I think Chelsea had some stronger opinions. She was defending <laughs> herself on LeBron. I, I, she was more defending herself than telling us why he should be number one. Right, right. Honey, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's uh, Chelsea. You're defending yourself, which is good. Like you know, but. I just think that in the whole and the point is we want to see the players at their peak and and um, that would be my contentions. Like I, I don't want to see LeBron 
staying on for X, Y reasons to play with Bronny. That, mm-hmm. That's fine. He's, he's able to do it. It's awesome that he's able to do it. But, like, my thing was I want to see him at peak. Even if he breaks down at 35, I want to see him going for the championship right. mm-hmm. all out. And I think that's what the fans want to see. And I think we kind of missed that a little bit with – uh, this season, that seems to be a bigger and bigger topic, the load management issue. Again, we, we talked to Jason Powell, a Clippers longtime athletic trainer, two episodes ago, and he kind of gave us a little insight, and it makes sense. Uh, Chelsea, I wanted to ask you, like, do you agree with him? And, and, and it seems to make sense from what people are saying on Internet. Like, the players don't always decide that. It's the, it's the management, and it's the, basically the health and wellness division of the, of the franchise. Yeah, I mean, I, I – I... Being a player, I see both sides of it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I totally understand the need sometimes for risk uh, based off a of schedule, based off of, you know, what's going on. You, we've heard players kind of allude to before that they have games that, you know, they kind of marked on the calendar that they're okay with losing because they know they're going to sit out or whatever, but they have to prepare for maybe this head-to-head matchup with the number one yeah. seed in the East right. or, you know, vice versa. So I, I, I totally understand it. And I understand the fans' perspective too, though. Like, you know, hey, we're, we want to see you guys play. You know, the, the best entertainment we're going to get is the best players being on the floor. Um, so I, I kind of just see both sides, and I hope that there can be some type of common ground. Because I, I do have some, you know, grievances with the NBA and just how they do stuff. And, like, it's kind of sometimes seems like there's not as much structure and order, you know, as, as, as it could be. And I think if, if you have better parameters, then you're going to get a better product on, on most nights. You know, we, we talk about awards and, and this is a, not it's kind of relevant, but a little bit of a sidebar. But like like players getting the MVP award or players being all star, like you should have to play a certain amount of games. You should have to qualify for these achievements. Yeah. So it kind of all goes in and it's relevant to to load management because some of these players are, are, are you know, making all star and they've only, you know, played. 40% of the games. So I think the NBA, we just talked about CIF revamp, could use a little revamp too, just in yeah. terms of its policies yeah. and, you know, in terms of what they're allowing the teams to to get away with and get by. And if, if, if players want to, I, I think players will play a lot more if they know, hey, I can't be an all-star if I don't play 65% of the games. <laughs> right. Or, you know, so there, there's, there's certainly ways to balance it out. So as a player, I see the need for rest. I understand 82 games is a long time. You have players like Braun who have, you know, been to the, you know, prior to the Lakers, but just going to the postseason every year and you're playing over 100 games. So it could be a lot, but they need to balance it out somehow. So I don't really know the answers, but I just feel like if you start putting some parameters on some of these accolades and awards and, and, and bonuses and contractual stuff, then the players will correct themselves. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think that it definitely needs a revamp. Um, one thing people talk about, so the players are the ones that are doing the low management, but it's 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 also equally like the the, the teams, <laughs> the uh, their the organizations are are saying, oh yeah, sit out, right? Like we talked to Jason Powell, right, uh, yeah. from the Clippers about you know advancing advancement in technology with like in medicine, right? So now that they got more data, they understand how, the importance of load management. But I'm with you, like. They play an all star game. They they get voted an all star game where they're selected and they've only played twenty games in the season. Like that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> hey, how are you in the MVP voting? You play fifty out of eighty two games. Like, there's no way that should happen. And I don't think the players help themselves. Like Shea Gilgers Alexander talking about like with the all star game. I know this was yeah. different subject, but he's talking about there needs more of an incentive. Like, while you're wearing a fur coat. Like, yo, like, you make millions, bro. Like, you get a bonus for even getting into the game and you need an incentive. It's like now we're getting to a point from a perspective, like, from just the outside looking in, right? You're yeah. just a fan. You just think that the only way the players will play more games is if you just give them more money, right? Yeah. Like, that, that's, that's a bad look. <laughs> that's a bad look. So, yeah. you know, what – the NBA doesn't work without players, right? Well, the NBA doesn't work without fans. Like, <laughs> you, there needs to be a, there needs to be a revamp. There needs to be more of a balance. Right now, I don't think it's balanced at all. It, yeah. it, just, it just it just looks bad. It just it looks bad, and it's almost like organizations and even the players themselves are putting making the players look bad <laughs> in yeah. all this. And it's kind of like, oh, it's their fault, and you know, they got as just as much to blame with it. 
Can All I right. just say one thing just to piggyback on what you said, Ani, but like to Shai's point, well, not to his point, like the incentive is already there in your contract. You're getting a bonus for being an all star. Right. Period. Sure. Everybody has those in their contracts. Hey, you have, they have so many, you know, everybody's contract is different. Don't get me wrong, but incentives for certain things, making the playoffs, being an all star, being on the all defensive team, being on the all NBA team. Everybody has certain incentives in their contract. So you're still playing for something anyway, like, you know, grand scheme of things. So I'm really telling you the easiest way to correct this is to just start not letting these people be eligible for these awards. Right. If you do that, I'm telling you, it, it will it will just change everything. Like, I, I, I know how important it is for Braun to be a 20 time all star for a shot. You know, like they, right. they, they like that stuff. So whether they're, sure. they're bullshit in the game or not, they, they want to be all NBA. They want to, you know, be MVP. But if you can't qualify for that stuff because you never play, then let's see, you know, you'll change your tune a little bit. I promise you. That makes sense. Yeah, what do you think, Ronnie? Well, I, I think that uh, it goes to the bigger thing of the All-Star game and, and that. I think, yeah, they the the, the players got to understand they get the accolades. So it's kind of like Russell, Russell Westbrook. When he's playing really well and okay, see or nothing, he's getting the accolades. But then when... The fans are booing him and calling him a clown and all that. Anyway, he wants to say all the fans. Well, like, so the fans, the fans are going to be tough on you. So what I'm trying to say is that the players get the accolades, so they're going to get the blame, even though we clearly know from Jason Powell and just from what we know that it's not always their decision. But right. they're the ones who are going to get the hit because they're the ones that are going to get the accolades. It's not like the front office is going to get uh, when true. the NBA yeah. wins the, 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 the title, the players get the credit. So in other words, they're going to have to share some of the blame. So I think the players need to have some some self reflection. Look at where we're at here. How much money we're making? How good of a lifestyle we have? The NBA didn't always have this. Like you got to have some um, some self pride. I, I think this has kind of reached the tipping point with the All Star game. We've seen the All Star game kind of decline over the years, right? Yeah. You go back to the great one in two thousand one where Iverson and Marbury were going at it. Kobe. It was just a great game. You know what I mean? And then we kind of like okay, now it's more of a celebration. There's a lot of activations for the players. They got more endorsements. They got to make appearances. They got to go to this party. They got to go to this after party. It's a lot of weekend. It's a long weekend. But it's still you got to put in the product. So I think we've kind of reached a crescendo where like, yeah, this, whatever they did this past year is not working. You know what I mean? Whatever, again, it has a little bit to do with maybe it's in Utah. Obviously, Utah's not not Dallas, honey. It's not Atlanta. But still, the product is terrible. Like you gotta, our guy Matt McClung, uh, you know the Paul's uh, Life All American, kind of saved that whole All Star Saturday. Really, he did. Like, he did. Uh, and he's not even in the NBA. Really, I mean, he's not really like an everyday NBA. Right, player. right. So we kind of gone from Jordan, Dominique, in the slam dunk contest to you know Kobe and the young group. Now we're not even getting the guys in it, and then now Kevin Durant is like, "Dog, what are we doing? Dog, you're not in the dunk contest." What do you mean? <laughs> you, you you're not you're not in it. LeBron's not in it. The other stars. So what do you mean? What are we doing? We have the NBA has to do something. So I mean, they, it's got to be a little bit of a, a self mm -hmm. self reflection and be like, okay, what are we doing? Because I think people have kind of seen it lately in the last few years, but this year, it's really being talked about. Like, yo, that that was a terrible product, and I think the fans are finally getting it. They're not watching the All Star game. What do you right. guys think about that? They're not watching that. I'm not watching that shit. What I don't know what you guys think. I, I didn't watch it at all, and I've seen the reports that it was, I was asleep. So yeah. no, I didn't yeah. see any of it. Um, but if and you I thought it was a great game, Chelsea, game. like if you thought it was a 2001 type All Star game, you probably would have said, "Hey, I need to watch this game because they they've right. been really good lately." Yeah. You know what I mean? No, definitely. Yeah. But uh, even now, for me, like we've kind of talked about this before, like I'm not waking up in the middle of the night for too many NBA games. To just to be honest, during the playoffs when it's you know I'm usually yeah. home by then, so then I'm really locked in and stuff like that. But you know, I'm not waking up at two in the morning to watch All Star game. No, I'm not doing it. So for me, <laughs> so I missed the All Star game. I saw the highlights, and even in the little clips that I saw, yeah, there was a, a point in time where Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going off, you know, one on one, and the rest of the guys are all literally all, totally like they near off the court. They're mm -hmm. all the way, you know, to the right side of the court while watching them go one on one. So. Um, I heard about it, but I wouldn't stay up to watch it either. Just being totally honest, I watched it, and that was I. I it's like more of a tradition for me to watch the NBA All Star games. Sure. And you're right, Ronnie. Like people talk about in the past few years, it's been 
it's getting it's gotten kind of progressively gotten worse. Like I can remember that 2001 All Star game with Kobe and Stephon and Vince yeah. and yeah. Iverson. This year was the worst <laughs> I've ever yeah. seen. Like you kind of hoping at some point, okay, maybe in these last two minutes they're gonna at least compete more. Yeah. Like they were just letting people slowly dribble to the basket and just dunk or lay it up. And even hearing the comments, like, yeah, I love Luca, but like Luca's talking about, I'm ready to go to Mexico. Like I'm not trying to get hurt. Like. And they had him on mic. <laughs> they had him on the mic. And it was just like everybody just looked like, oh, I'm ready to go on vacation. Like, listen, I know their workload is a lot, but they could have competed for at least five to ten of those minutes. Like, they didn't compete at all. Like, just guys dribbling. They're dri- like they're dribbling like how I'm dribbling right now on an Achilles strain. Like, bro, like, and then just going up and laying up. I'm just like, dang, bro, like, we're going to. We gonna at least try to swipe ally we're gonna block it or something. It just it was embarrassing. I it's embarrassing. That's yeah. I hated watching that. And okay. and I, there's no one like you shouldn't to me. I mean, you're a ball player. Like, I know this is what you this is what you do for a living. Like, you should have more pride in that. Like, you shouldn't yeah, need yeah. more of an incentive to go harder for two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's my problem with my it's a product you're putting in. And now finally the fans are getting it and it's showing in the ratings. So the ratings are tanking for this. So they know something's got to be done. Uh, Chelsea, you, in just your opinion, what needs to be done for the All-Star Weekend and, and just in general to kind of get this back on the right track? Well, in terms of the game itself, like yeah. from, from what I saw and just all the extracurricular activities, like even with the draft and stuff like that, some of it was just too long. Though, right? oh, yeah, I got yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, okay. five hours like and we haven't even started the game yet like like they need to break some of this stuff down they have to figure out to get the players to just you know play a, a little more a little harder and I, I really just find it interesting because they talked about like not not wanting to get hurt like all these different things but all, all the players are insured and I've sure. seen these guys play harder in the summer pickup games where, you know, Rico Hines runs and stuff like that, where where they're actually getting after it. And, you know, you can honestly just get hurt doing anything. So yes. with, I, I feel like the argument that they're trying to make is actually more relevant to other people. Like people like, oh, I told you how, like in the summer, I'm not insured. So I don't want to play pickup and play really hard and stuff like that because yeah, I'm right. not insured <laughs> until, I, until I get overseas. But that's not the case for these guys. Nobody wants yeah. you guys to get hurt. But if yeah. if... if Knock on wood, something happens to me in the All Star game. I'm still getting paid, and and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get back and to be on the court. Right. So yeah. you know, Chet Holgram, he got hurt in a NBA sanctioned run. You know, and he, right. he's playing. What, what was he playing in the Seattle program? Which is you know mm-hmm. they have yeah. they uh, select certain programs that are programs that are approved for the players to play in. So he yeah. got hurt doing that. He's still fine. He's still making his money. He's still under contract. So I just don't feel like the, the excuse that they're trying to make is valid for those guys. You're, you're playing in a game. It's You don't want to treat it like a real game, but uh, everything that a real game comes with in terms of just having treatment and, you know, whatever you need to be able to perform and to still get your money if something happens is, is all there. So it kind of just doesn't make sense, really. But the main thing is they need to cut all this extra stuff. The draft and stuff is cool, but I don't know if we need to take spend so much time on it. Like, <laughs> no, time, it's, it's, you know? it's a show, but yeah, it's too it's too long. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was horrible. Time. And then you know maybe get creative with the game and and elim endings or you know different first to a certain amount of you know I don't know they need to get creative with it because just doing a regular. Let's play. It, it it looks, you know, it looks bad. So yeah. I, I don't really have the answer, basically. It's just I didn't like, you know, what happened. I felt like it was just a lot going on. And I feel like the player's excuse is just not great. If anything, just don't play in it. Because right. if you want to go to Mexico, you should go. I understand having a break, but I don't need you to be already halfway to Mexico, Luca, in terms of your mind and your mentality and, and <laughs> yeah. your uh, unwillingness to really want to be here, basically. Yeah. Right. Now I would uh I would just make it east and west. Uh whoever wins gets home court advantage in the finals. And I know the players will get upset by that, but they that's what they that's what they need to do. I mean, yeah. if you want them to be competitive, and then people are like, oh well, there's only a couple teams that contend. I said, trust you, trust me. Like if you're a six, seven, eight seed in the West, yeah. you still have a decent chance of making a run at it. And yeah. if you make a run and you get to the finals, and let's like, you know. 
I know way back in the day, like the Knicks that when they that lockout season they made to the finals, they were a last seed. Like, and they can get they's like, hey, look, if we make a run and we get to the finals, we got home court advantage, like we can really do something. Trust me, like a play, I don't know, playoff teams, you know how it is, guys. Like they yeah. they can start believing in themselves, especially oh, yeah, they can get hot. So I don't think it's just two or three teams of I don't think it'll just be a Giannis and a um and a Jason Tatum that will go hard. I think a lot of guys that have contending playoff teams will go harder in, in that. Mm. Uh, I I I would do that. My more extreme solution is that, that they, if it's just horrible like that, just start finding them. Just start taking money away from them. Sure. You know, like, oh, this is a whole, you know, I don't know. Nothing like they they will never should do that. But I'm just saying, like, make it more where it's a consequence of not going hard, right? Uh, and and not playing and whatever that looks like, that's what it looks like. Yeah. I, I would say along the line of I think when you mentioned it, both of you is self pride. First of all, have pride in your product because it's gonna come to a crescendo. And if the ratings keep tanking, then when you go back to the collective bargaining group and say, hey, wait a minute, you guys are not going to get that guarantee. Well, look at these ratings, you know, so that's going to kind of take care of it a little bit of itself. But, yeah, it, it's having a self pride of being a pro, being the best at what you do and and, and kind of seeing where you're, you know, why we got here. Because uh, right. all the guys used to play hard. <laughs> so, like all the all-star games were awesome. They are pretty good. You know, mm-hmm. that's the whole point. So I do get the exposure thing. The players have a lot more exposure. The guys used to play hard because they weren't on national TV. So it was their right. chance. If you weren't on the Lakers or, or the Celtics, it was your chance to kind of show like, hey, I'm one of the best players in the league. So I, I get that. The players have plenty of opportunity. So uh, you, you still got to have some pride in, in, in who's watching it. And the fans got to start being smart. Like, yo, I'm not going to go to the three-day All-Star Weekend in Utah and spend $5,000 if they're giving me shit. You know, like. Right, right. Fans got to be smart. Fans, be smart. You know what I mean? Be smart. So, they won't. you know, I, I think those are good points you, that you guys made. I'm, I'm kind of along those lines. You know, some of it's uh, just can be fixed easily, like different attitudes. I, and what do you guys think about the, again, the, the older players just constantly ragging on the younger guys that are playing now? Like, oh, you shouldn't do this. Like, they, Does that need to be changed? Does the media – Man need to change, or is that just what the media does, and they're going to continue to do that? I mean, you know, the media needs the media needs some hot takes and stuff like yeah. that, you know, to put on the put on the front page. But I definitely think, like, I'm I'm a, I'm someone. I think the older guys need to be more problem solvers <laughs> than just just always just pointing out the problem. Like, yeah. I mean, you just bark every time. It's like, okay, yeah. like you're just barking. Like, let's at, like be part of the solution than just always like we know there's an issue like that's evident right well let's not just keep talking about like let's see let's like none of them offer solutions in my opinion it's just all about just talking about the problem and be more be more the solution than just talking about the problem all the damn time sure sure and chelsea is that kind of your sentiment there I mean, yeah, kind of same with Ani. Like, you know, the old heads swear, you know, they could have did it better, differently, or whatever. Like, just they have to just respect the fact that times have changed. And, you know, we are in a social media era, uh, a load management era, uh, you know, less defense era, let them tell it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's easy to say, you know, would it, could it, should it, do it like this, do it like that. But some of these guys have no idea what it's like you know, in terms of just the exposure, um, the scrutiny, sure. like uh, just everything. So it's easy to talk about how you would handle a situation that you were never in. So yeah. I, I think that they do have a lot of wisdom and I think that they have some very valid points, but to say how you would handle every situation when you guys, you know, barely had cameras and no social media. <laughs> with, right, with, right, you know, right. It's just not right. relevant. It's not yeah. relevant. So yeah. I'm oh, glad everyone right. has an opinion. It's okay, but it just doesn't matter, really. Correct. Oh, like you say that about the man, Dominique Wilkins. When the Hawks were not on TV that much, so they would always usually play the Bulls like on this Memorial Day Monday, and I'd be like, I'm watching that game. I don't, I don't care what I got to do. I don't care. If my dad gets mad and says I have to go cut the law. I don't care. I'm watching that game. Right. You didn't get a chance to see these dudes, and like they never really disappointed. So again, if you we didn't watch 82 games. So, of course, if I watch 82 games of a bad team, I'm going to be, like, criticizing them. When I watched three only back then, you know, they're only on national TV twice. Of course, they look like all world. 
it's really perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously I got it because I lived in LA. So I got a chance to watch the Lakers when they were in on the road, you mm-hmm. know, they, they, their, 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 their games were on, on local TV. It was awesome. But the, all the rest of the fans didn't get to see that. And I surely wasn't watching uh, the Bucks or the Suns when they were very good, like in the late eighties on TV, they were on TV. So how do we know what they were doing? Like you said, you know, and the media has always been protecting certain guys. They protected Magic Johnson and Jordan a lot. It was as we later know, you know what I mean? Right, so, right. So it's like you said, Chelsea, it's easy to say that when you got didn't have to deal with it. So we'll see what, what changes they made. They Obviously, the ratings do show they do need to make some changes. Uh, there's even fans, a longtime fans such as yourself, Chelsea, that are not really watching this weekend anymore. So. We'll see if they change. How about the game itself? The, meaning the season, uh, Chelsea talk a little. The Lakers have a setback. Mallow Ball broke his ankle. Yeah. And now the Lakers have some injuries. Let's talk about just a little bit about the season and what's happening yeah. lately. Uh, well, okay. Let's start with my Lakers. So, actually, surprisingly, I was up the other day when they played, yeah. I think, two days ago because it was a Sunday game. So, it was mm-hmm. early my time. It was only like 10 p.m. Yeah. So, you know, I caught their game versus Dallas, which was absolutely terrible for the first half for them. I think uh, mm-hmm. the Lakers got down as much as like 27 or 28 points. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they kind of just start chomping away. Um, Braun, which I love to see it, was playing a lot in the post and a lot in the mid post and just kind of using his physicality, his body, getting to the basket. AD was exceptional. AD, it, this is the AD that I want to see all the time. Like sure. you, you watch him and you want to be mad at him for certain games and then you watch games like this and you're just like right. you, you you know every every other week I want to trade AD but then I watch him in games like that and I'm like okay we can't get rid of him because he's gonna go to another team and he's gonna do that like yeah, he's really sure. incredible um but the Lakers I, I really like their pieces I, I don't know if that win was a testament to the you know roster shakeup or a testament to maybe Dallas's roster shakeup. Like we got to look at Luka and Kyrie and it was a little shaky out there. Like Mm -hmm. who's going to do what, take what shot, you know? So, um, but, but nonetheless, it was an entertaining game. I think if you, if you stuck around and and didn't give up on it at halftime, you know, the second half was, uh, was, was very much good. Although uh, LeBron, uh, I think I heard he he heard something pop in his foot. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's planter. Wow. Or, or something. So um, now he could be out, which, you know, obviously is not good for a struggling Lakers team who is trying to, you know, just get into regular seating as opposed to the play in. Right. But um, other than that, you know, those are basically the only games that I caught. Um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, um, that that game was very interesting. I thought L.A. was smart to actually start throwing inside. Like, because I like we talked about before, like Dallas interior yeah. presence is god awful, right? So, like, yeah. you know, we talk about Dwight Powell and them, and Christian was not a great interior defender, and JaVale McGee's an idiot. Uh, no offense, but, like, he just all over the place. So, <laughs> so you know, I was like, okay, when is L.A. going to really use their, you know, their their size, like their their advantage? And then when they started doing LeBron and AD, I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a long day. And I thought, I like, I like what Luka and Kyrie bring offensively. I never doubted that. It's just there is a miscommunication, like, in some things, but that's natural. That's going to happen, like, when you have two superstars come together, like, in February, mm-hmm. right? So, like, I understand that's a process in that but like Dallas is defense. I mean, defensively, it's just awful. I mean, it's just wow. it, it is it's just a bad defensive team, and that was my main fear, you know, of getting rid of Dorian Finney Smith. Which if you get Kyrie Irving is great, but we didn't add anybody that could really substantially help us, especially in the interior, especially as a versatility on the like a wing defender. We get Maxi Kleber back. I know things will help, but it's still, I'm still really concerned about those things. Um, it's just not it's not good uh we gotta talk about dame lillard 71 points <laughs> you yeah. know he had 41 and a half i mean he could to me the way he was rolling because i watched some of it like he looked like he could have got 100 i ain't gonna lie like I, like he could have got at least 90 guys like the way he was going because i think in the third quarter they didn't play him very much but the way if they like played him played him yeah i thought he could have had like 90 plus I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like he was on a roll like that, so wow. you know, and he had yeah, 41 and a half because 
it, it was it, he did a hell of a job. I know people talked about oh him them giving him uh the, that that game off before right they're stuck in a plane or whatever. And you know one thing about Dame, that I love, <laughs> one thing about Dame that I love like he he's like okay like I'm gonna shut y'all I'm gonna shut y'all up like I'm gonna put seventy one. So what what now like yeah yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that video where he was kind of uh, rapping on the plane while they were. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, he's an awesome player. Uh, we kind of mentioned him as one of the teams that really didn't do anything, right? Him and the right. them and the Bulls, they didn't really make any moves. Uh, man, hopefully they get on a roll. Maybe he can get on a roll. Like, obviously he's not going to score seventy one each, right. each game, but like if he gets hot, they can win eight out of ten. You know, uh, man, that's. Mm-hmm. The guys who scored that many points are very few. I know we're in this offensive era, but like, that's pretty awesome. Uh, we had his high school coach, Orlando Watkins, on the on the show previously many episodes ago, talking about his uh, like coming of age and mm-hmm. and uh, how he always want he never got he never wanted he never got in the big showcase, honey. That was his problem. Like, mm-hmm. we we saw him. I saw him at a big uh, event at Pepperdine. And uh, it was one of those things where it's like the noon game, the two game, the four, six. Of course, most of the fans come at six o'clock for the eight o'clock right. game. It was Larry Drew versus Jordan Hamilton at Dominguez versus Taft, right? And everybody know who – and, and DeMar played in that event. And, and uh, Oakland High played Tyler Honeycutt, the late Tyler Honeycutt, mm-hmm. who played at Silmar and played at UCLA. He, he passed away and – I said, man, I got to get down to see, you know, the oh, the Oakland Rebels and see Dame. I haven't seen him much. Dude, there was like 100 people in the gym, right? And, like, <laughs> you get to see him and he's pretty damn good. But, like, that's just how sometimes happens to guys. Like, they don't – and the coach, Orlando Watkins, was telling me, Ryan, I was trying like hard as hell to get him set up against Larry Drew because he felt like – I know what he meant. Like, Dame yeah. is good as Larry Drew. You know what I mean? And, like, but Larry Drew was going to North Carolina. His dad playing in the NBA. Like, he was always in – in the eight o'clock game and like right. Oakland high was always in the noon to 10 AM game in all these events. So that was cool that he talked about that. And, you know, he stuck with the loyalty of Weber state. And uh, I think our guy on the street ball team played with him at Weber state. So that, that's a pretty yeah, uh, Frank, Nitty. Frank Nitty played with him a little bit at Weber state. And Frank didn't really, didn't really work for him. He, he, he came back to Cal state LA and he had to get a job and, he was like, man, I don't know if I want to play basketball anymore. So it, it worked out for both of them in different ways. Right. But that was, that's pretty awesome to see. Uh, I don't know, Chelsea, if you have any thoughts on a 71-point game. That, not too many guys have scored yeah. that much. I mean, I, I didn't actually watch the game, I'm being totally honest with you. But I saw the highlights. And I saw he was like 13 for 22 from three. And I've already said this before many times because I know we try to water things down because everybody's scoring points. You have to make those baskets, Ronnie. Yeah. The shot making and the tough, the, yeah. the the way Dame is scoring those points and how he's coming, you know, two feet past the half court line and just pulling up and going downhill. And, you know, like you still have to make those baskets. Like I, I don't yeah. want to be a prisoner at the moment, but I would look at Dame sometimes and I'm like, damn, how yeah. many people are really, you know, just right. better than this guy? Like, forget accolades and, you know, we know Dame is loyal through and through. Portland ain't never going to win nothing. He may stay there forever. That's all true. But just as an individual talent, he is incredible. Like, I I don't really know how many guys position-wise go ahead of him. And I don't want to – I'm talking about just strictly basketball, not accolades, championships, this, that, whatever. Um just strictly basketball. And, and, and I am a player, so I don't always, you know, go off of analytics and, and, you know, all those achievements. We talked about that previously when, when I brought up Kobe, how Kobe used to make me feel and the wow factor, like Dave makes me feel a way sometimes when he's hooping, because it's just like, he's very good. So I don't know, maybe after Steph, uh, shot making, just pure scoring, like who's really doing that? Like, I think that's something that we have to talk about, you know, maybe not today, but uh, no doubt. we need to talk about it. And that's why he was probably on the 75, all-time 75 team. I think people look at, well, he hasn't accomplished that much, but it goes to your point of how good he is in that moment, right. like at peak. And that's kind of what we were arguing about in our last pod about peak and, and playing 10 years compared to maybe stick around 15. And I, I mean, if Dame gave it at all and retired at 35, I wouldn't be, I have no problem with it. Like, yeah. You know, because it's just like I want to see you at your peak and in trying 
every game. So hopefully the NBA gets more back to that again. We'll see how they how they fix it and going forward. They're going to have to make some moves because if that collective bargaining agreement changes and they're not making as much money, it'll change. Okay, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's what it'll change. Like, Speaking okay. on Dame, just one last question really quick since we've been talking about him. Did you hear the comment that he made? Um, I don't know if it was yesterday oh, or about two Russ. days ago um, about Russ. You know, yeah. since it's kind of just on topic, on par, uh, I'll refresh your memory, Ronnie. He he basically was just alluding that, you know, the grass isn't always greener. And he kind of used Russ as an example because, you know, some days Dame is, you know, interactive on social media for the most part. Sure. Every now and then he'll chime in, he'll say something, he'll defend himself. So uh, I guess a week and a half ago, somebody tweeted about him just loyalty going to be the death of him. Like, you're going to stay in Portland, never win nothing. And and he was like, you guys got to, you know, let that loyalty narrative go. Like, you know, I've accomplished so much, you know, being with Portland, I'm good where I'm at, blah, blah, blah. So then when he was addressing this in the media, he just kind of brought up Russell Westbrook and just saying that there's examples of the grass not always being greener. Like Russ sure. being an MVP player and in OKC signing this big lucrative deal and then um, ends up getting traded to Houston. Then he lasts one year in Houston, then he's traded to, to Washington. Then, you know, uh, leaves Washington for the Lakers. Now he's on his fifth team and wow. or fourth team in, in five years. And it's just like he was an MVP of our league. And people, you know, right. look at him like he's trash now. Like and, and, and not that he's trash. And I'm saying like the narrative around him is nobody wants him. Like, you know all because right. he decided to make this move. So I just kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts on, like, you know, basically what Dame was saying and, and whether you guys agree or not. Yeah, no, I um, I, I agree. I think, you know, Coach Kelvin Sampson at U of H, mate, he, he, he one time told me this, that the grass is only greener where you water it, right? <laughs> um, and that's just that's just reality. Like, the grass isn't greener just because you go somewhere else, right? Um, and – you know, it's kind of interesting that he used Russell Westbrook, right? Like, if Russell was still in OKC, like, how much flack does he get right, <laughs> uh, right now? Ob obviously, OKC need to make that trade because they were going through a new direction as far as rebuilding. But I think wherever you wherever you water it is where the grass is greener, right? I don't think you just have to move or do this and do that in order for you to get what you want, right? Like, yeah, could Dame ring chase and get something? Yeah, but, like, we're talking about, like, I can't even argue it. Like, after Steph, like, I mean, yeah, you could put Luca in there, but, like, man, like, Dame is really that good, <laughs> right? But, and, and if we just look at it from a basketball perspective, like, there's not, there's not a, there's not a real, uh, he has a legitimate case and there's not a real argument against him. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, I just, I, I love what Dame said. I thought it was just real. I just, and I think it's something for, players to like learn from like <laughs> you don't have to go like the grass isn't always green on the other side like take care of what you got in front of you <laughs> right yeah. and then let that flourish i think sometimes the fans forget the the simple and basic things especially him coming from the weber state uh background and not being highly the most high recruited guy maybe getting overlooked is that he stayed with that college and then he met his wife in that environment he goes back there in the summer a month at a time, three weeks at a time, two months. Maybe his kids, how do maybe his kids have told him, Hey, I really like my school in Portland. It could be that simple. Like, right, I right. I like my neighborhood. I like my neighbors. Like, why mess that up? You know, like, it's not the fans only look at, Oh, he's only averaging this much. His analytics would be better on this team. Like, he's, he might not be thinking about something very simple. Like, he loves his where he lives. You know what I mean? And, or his, his wife likes it. Maybe his wife likes the neighbors. And there could be some things like that that matter to the players. I think we get right. sometimes too caught up in, like, their accolades and, mm -hmm. and, and oh, he should go to that team and he might win a wing, ring. He's ring chasing. Like, no, there's a whole world out there. Yes, he plays 82 games, but there's 364 games in the year, 364 days in the year that he's living his life and he seems to be content. So Fact. let's let him be content. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I think. So, um, you know, speaking of that, we'll, we'll change subjects. So shout out to Dame Lillard. Shout out to Coach Orlando Watkins for coming on the pod, talking about him. Obviously, he went to Oakland High School, and he's, he's very prideful where he's from. So uh, we talked about that 08, and we're talking about uh, Dame, Clay Thompson, and Drew Holiday, and DeMar. And Drew Holiday's <laughs> name came out. Drew Holiday. So Drew Holiday was uh, – 
the Mr. Basketball in California. Mm-hmm. He kind of was one of those guys that got all the accolades. Him and DeMar played a couple times that year. They played down at Torrey Pines, and they played in another tournament. Obviously, that's when Matt Rodriguez and the Balls Life guys originally kind of started following DeMar and kind of grew from there. So, like, when we hear these comments of scouts saying Bronny James can be like Drew Holiday. Uh, <laughs> Drew Holiday's a top five player in the country. Gatorade player of the year. I mean, he went to the NBA and what? One, you know, right. He was an NBA player. He was an NBA player right. then. And everybody knew it. So when you guys hear these things and then we go to the current group and it's like, we know this is not the strongest group. We already right. know this is not the strongest group. That's been established. We're going to talk about that in this upcoming draft because we have two these two great players. And then this 224 draft is not supposed to be good. So then you got people saying Bronny James is a top 10 pick and comparing him to Drew Holiday. Uh, Ani, we'll start with you. What are we doing here? Where's that all about? And, uh, <laughs> you know, why are we going there? Because me and you, us three, are saying something completely different in the last 10 pods. So I, I know I'm going to upset some people, but it, first off, He's not a top ten pick. Like he needs to, he needs to show more. Like what I feel like is is disrespectful. Like you talked about to Drew Holiday, right? Yeah. Who was the was the number one rated point guard in his class? Was uh, McDonald's? All, well, I mean, Bronny is, but like I think he won Gatorade. Yeah, he won Gatorade Player of the Year. Uh, his teams were very successful. Like even when they talk about Marcus Smart, like as a mid level, like people don't understand. I looked at Marcus Smart's record at Flower Mound the last th- his last three seasons. They were one hundred nine and six. They won back to back state titles. Like yes. Bronny has not done anything close to that at Sierra Canyon. No, and we're not talking about Marcus Smart right now compared to Bronny. We're talking about Marcus Smart sophomore, junior, and senior year in the high school. What he was doing for his team compared to what Bronny was doing. Uh, DeAnthony Mel- Melton he won back to back state titles <laughs> out yes. in Crespi. Like yes. There, people, people say, "Oh, well, that's the team thing." Well, if here's my thing: if someone is a top ten player in a class, their yeah. team, if you're like that, like as in a especially in a draft, your team better be winning, especially your yeah. high school team, right? Mm-hmm. So let's. Yeah. I think people devalue winning when they talk about Bronny. Like, I'm not saying Bronny's a loser. I'm not saying that, but I think Bronny needs to do more, and sure. and especially mm-hmm. going forward to. Re- he, he hasn't done anything to get rewarded that, right? Like, I think Bronny is a good player. I think one day he could play in the NBA and be a fine basketball player. Like, I'm not taking that away from him, but yeah. I do think he is getting – he's getting rewarded stuff that he really hasn't earned. Um, sure. and, and and I don't think that's fair on the kid, right? And it's not saying that he's not – he can't get to that point, but when you – when people, like – I just think when you compare him to those guys, they're like, oh, D'Anthony Melton, right? Like, no, like, did y'all watch D'Anthony in high school? Like, oh, no. Marcus Martin. Did y'all watch Marcus Martin in high school? Oh, Drew Holiday. Like, did you watch these guys in high school? Yeah. And and, and Bronny, if we go, like, I know he's he's gotten a lot better in the past year. Like, who, Paul, he actually did pretty good. Like, I, I would encourage people to actually go watch some of his full games, you know. Yeah. It's either good and the bad, but – Oh man, like I, I don't, I, I respect Jonathan Gavoni's eye. Like when you talk about yeah. him recognizing like Luka Doncic and Giannis and sure. uh, and other guys, like he's done a fantastic job. But I do feel like some of the things that Bronny has been receiving, he hasn't, he hasn't earned it. Sure. He hasn't earned it, and and that, that that to me is the disappointing part. Sure. Well, Ani, just you kind of hit the nail on the head, but you made a point about hurting the kids like stop doing this to these kids they are not kd they are not drew holiday they are none of these people and and i understand it's the scout's job to you know kind of maybe project a a player and and what they're going to do but it it really just honestly sets them up for failure in my opinion like like, everybody's not going to be a star people would die to have the nba career that drew holiday has had and (laughs) is continuing to have and just let the kid develop, make the NBA if he does, like you said, Ani. And if he has a formidable career and is able to, to stick past the league average of a couple seasons, then that's okay too. Right, right. Yeah. I just feel like it's just not realistic. You put all these pressure on these kids from, from all every year, it's somebody. 
Amani Bates was the next KD. You know, right. Like, don't do it. And, and you guys are picking the cream of the cream of the cream of the crop. Yeah, you're not picking the the, the twelfth man. Uh, you're yeah. you're picking the best that in the world, like yeah. that we yeah. totally have to offer. There, there's not yeah. a lot of people that are ever going to get to these levels, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But I'm saying yeah. the comparisons are asinine. They're unrealistic. The kids are going to spend their lives trying to chase these comparisons and do certain things, and and it's just not realistic. Like I said, I, I am rooting for Bronny. I root for, for all kids, believe it or not, whether they right. get what they deserve or don't. But but I understand that a lot of kids, you know, are going to be lucky to just touch the NBA, sure. let alone be a Drew Holiday. Like, it's just it, – that that's my take on it. It has nothing to do even with Bronny's game. I think that Bronny is a good player. Yeah, he's absolutely. Developed, he's improved. This has nothing to do with him. It's more about these narratives and these, you know – these these pictures that we paint for these kids that are just unrealistic. And if we just let them develop and let them grow, then they can, you know, maybe surprise us. Maybe they'll turn out better than what we thought. You know, maybe they won't. But that yeah. that's to be seen. I, I don't like when we talk about comparisons with a lot of these players. And and like I said, especially when we're talking about the upper echelon of the NBA. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, go ahead, Ani. I you think you have another point. Yeah, I, I mean, and Ronnie, like you, you're someone. Uh, look at Mahoney. That's at uh, St. Mary's, correct? Uh, yeah, Adrian like, Mahoney. Yeah, Adrian Mahoney. Like you know, you, Ronnie, you're someone that's big on production, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, that's something that I've kind of had to instill in me in the past couple of years, like. As a scout, like I have to realize where I have missed on players, right? Like I've missed on players because I've done just more upside play than I have production in high school. And I'm not saying Bronny hasn't been productive in high school, but like he again, he just he hasn't been productive enough to say, yes, this is what he is a top 10 pick. And I, I just I just see like you talked about Imani Bates, Chelsea, like. Yeah. Now Amani is coming to his own because people stopped talking to him. He's in mm -hmm. Eastern Michigan and he's flourishing, right? Yeah. But if people didn't put that type of uh, he's the next LeBron and KD when he was <laughs> an A grader, like he never would have had to do. I think that they're part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're part of, like let the kid actually be productive. Like let's really judge him off his productivity and how he's how he's. Uh, how he's helping with winning basketball. And then let's judge him off that. Let's not judge him off this. Oh, yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, just because of his stature and his. Right. Like, yeah, and top he, 10 pick is hurt. Sorry, to, to Ani, Ani, to your point, just one more thing that just came to mind. Like, even with these projections, though, Ronnie, like, there's so much that goes into, like, a player being successful or turning right. out how they turn out. Like, we've seen so many stories. Like, even with the NBA, just – Fit and opportunity. Um, Kawhi Leonard getting drafted to the Spurs. They developed him, worked on a shot, yeah, went yeah. somewhere else. Flirt. You know what I mean? Like, it's, there's so many factors that come into play. It's not just about being a good player. Like, yeah. we've seen good players fall through the cracks, too. So I said, yeah. we don't have to put all these, like, you know, labels and stuff on these kids. I just feel like we, we can just let things play out how they play out. And I know it, it leads to clickbait and, you know, and, and things to talk about. But I just feel like. It, it's a setup every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, when you're on air and, and you're saying Bronny can be Marcus Smart or, 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 or Drew Holiday, that kind of player, like first take, like you said, don't skip so many steps. Right. Can Bronny be good as Matt Bradley is at San Diego state? Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. a you know, big, strong body. Right. And he dominate the mountain West conference. Like, cause mm -hmm. Back to your point, Chad said, maybe you don't feel the same way now, but you kind of mentioned in the summer, like, I think he could be a really good Mountain West mid-major plus type player and dominate at that level. And that's fair. Like, that's, that's right, really yeah. good. That's really good. <laughs> that's yes. really good. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, that, you know, that people make it be like it's it's yeah. blue blood or nothing for that yeah. kid. And yeah. it's like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Are you disrespecting the kid talking about San Diego State? Yeah. 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 yeah we just awesome. talked about Dame. Yeah, we were team, correct. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come yeah, on. Yeah. Correct, correct. He was very good in high school. Uh, again, he didn't maybe get he didn't have the platform, he wasn't on the right things like that. And you mentioned Marcus Smart, Ani. I mean, he he his team uh with Phil Fort, they won the Adidas championship at in Vegas at Rancho High School. The, to win Adidas, 
Ronnie ain't done that. Like, <laughs> right. you know, like, to win a big Vegas tournament. We talked about Jalen Brunson doing that. We talk about guys who maybe don't have the, like you said, Ani, the, the plus length, the NBA length, but they're really good players. So more of that needs to be said and, and spoken of. And you mentioned that, Ani, and you want to, like, I always tell people, you guys want to know what they do in high school, hit me up. Like, I'll talk to the coach. we get his real stats, his true stats, uh, what he did in the big game, kind of like what, what – and we kind of try to portray that as much as possible. Because you're right. We go back to Ronnie. Sierra Canyon has lost seven of their last 11 games right now going into this regional. They've lost three games in that pool that you guys are like, how the hell is that pool work? Right, right. But they went 0-3 in the pool. So it's like they're not – so where is this top 10? You should be dominating that, like you said. And, again, he's in a unique situation. I'll give you guys an example. We go to Amari Bailey, who's at UCLA. Amari Bay is going to be in the situation that nobody's ever been in. He's going to end up having seven, six or seven NBA teammates in high school. That even a college player doesn't play with, with mm -hmm. seven NBA teammates. Right. You, uh, Dame Lillard, I we were saying play with guys that are now executives and 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 mm -hmm. and managers. You know, like right, 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 right. So you look at Am uh, Amari Bailey. He's played with Cassius Stanley. I'm going to try to name him if I can real quick. Cassius mm -hmm. Stanley, uh, who's played in the NBA. We got Zaire Williams, BJ mm -hmm. Boston. Mm -hmm. What's the big kid? Co Christian Coloco. Yeah. Scotty Pippen is now playing in the NBA. That's five, right? Uh, we got him, KJ Martin. Mm -hmm. And if Bronny plays in the NBA, that's going to be eight. That yeah, is not wow. normal. Like, yeah. not normal <laughs> you know, so. When those guys leave and they're in college in the but Bronny, now it's your turn. Where is the top 10 ranking? Where is the wins, the big wins? They're not there. So, again, if you follow that and know that perspective, maybe you won't have that opinion that he's the next Drew Holiday. So you, right. you got to follow that a little bit to say, okay, they're a pretty good team, but they're not where they were when those guys were on the team. And mm. remember, Coloco wasn't even playing, and he played more in <laughs> Arizona and it is now in the NBA. So the, the, that needs more perspective, you say, Ani. So, again, that's why we follow what they do in high school. We, again, it's not projection to the NBA. We're trying to, you know, those accolades matter. So the uh, we did the updated Mr. Basketball Tracker just so happened to do it when, you know, we're talking about all this, all this came out. And I wanted to just give you guys the real quick recap and get your opinion. Number one on the list now. And, again, it's not, we talked about the class for 223. And nobody in 223 leads no more. So it's not DJ Wagner, not Ron Holland. It's Cam Boozer, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, nine ballots, 70 points out of 10 ballots and a possible 100 points. Isaiah mm -hmm. Collier from Wheeler going to USC comes in two. Two points behind, 68. DJ Wagner is now third. Eight ballots, uh, 62 points. Fourth is Ron Holland. 54 points, seven ballots. Fifth is Justin Edwards, who's going to Kentucky, just as DJ is. And he's from Imatep, and he had 52 points. And then uh, Cooper Flagg is number six. He's another sophomore, so Cam, mm -hmm. and, Cam and, and Flagg are both in the top six. And then uh, I think you'll like this, Ani Jackson Shellstad from West Lynn, who yeah. wasn't in the preseason balloting. He appeared on four ballots, 25 points. So, Ani, what's your just highline take on – uh, the results, and again, uh, there's 19 guys that got points, no brawny. Well, I like number one is right, Cameron Boozer. That's a bad boy. <laughs> I, I, love, I love watching Cameron Boozer play, so, you yeah. know, uh, I think that's right. I like that. I like that Jackson Show stat is in there. Uh, sure. He's had a really good season with West Lynn. He's productive. Every time I see him in the summer, he's been good. So, like, I'm excited. I'm happy to see sure. his productivity. <laughs> In in uh in those in in those ballots uh it is is very interesting that look Bronny's not in there but again like we you just said like they lost seven of the last eleven games right yeah. uh they lost the last three or four and um again I think in pool play but like, I'm just gonna say this like all those guys that are in there are productive in in winning <laughs> in yes. consistently winning and that that I like so I have no problem with that ballot sure uh. Chelsea, did, uh, we, we've talked about a sophomore never really being up there. 
Uh, Amani Bates got to that level. Again, mm -hmm. it, it hasn't worked out that way. Uh, is that okay? Like, Boozer is the national player here as a sophomore. I mean, again, LeBron didn't do it, and that's okay. That's a different year. That's a different time. Like, is, is that fine? And is that a good thing? And, and it's also like a wake up call for this 223 class. Yo, like, there's a lot to work on. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think it just speaks to the class, yeah. um, but I also think it speaks to his talent. You know, yeah. he's deserving. Nobody, nobody, he's always been in the mix. You know, yeah. uh, DJ Wagner maybe was a little bit of a head at some yeah. point in time, but, you know, he, he's been in the conversation. And I think that just speaks to how special of a talent he is that he has, you know, even being considered for, uh, for such a thing. But, you know, I don't think that's really, you know, it's always about class and, and, and who's, kind of available, basically, who yeah. he's going up against. But, um, you know, you guys speak highly of Cam. I've seen a couple of highlights on him. I know Ani's a big fan, so uh, sure. he's probably going to get it, you know. Wow. And, and Ani, to follow up on that, like, are you a little more excited? Because for this class, it hasn't really been decided, you know. So Ron Holland can go into McDonald's and really kick butt. Mm -hmm. Maybe DJ is like, hey, guys, I'm the top guy in this class, uh, you know. Uh, Isaiah Collier can make his mark. So, like, are you kind of excited that McDonald's, Jordan, and then Hoop Summit are going to, like, have more meaning? Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm very interested to see, like, Isaiah Collier. D, DJ will be interesting. I guess it will be good to see some bounce back, especially with what, what happened with them not being eligible yeah. to win a state title. So I yeah. would like to see some bounce back out of him uh, in these events. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited. Like, I think this is going to have some real meaning. Uh, get to see, you know, Ron Holland gets to take a little bit of a break, right? <laughs> Doug Bill couldn't make the playoffs. So I'm interested to see how I know he's pretty hungry to go to these events and perform. I was talking to his people and, um, you know, and then Isaiah Collier. I, I think Isaiah Collier ultimately gets it. Um, I love, I love, uh, I love Boozer, but I think Collier, I think he's going to finish, I think he's going to, he's going to really impose his will here. So, uh, but I'm excited to watch these. I think it's going to have a lot more meaning because there's not, it's not, uh, it's not a, a huge gap compared to like what we may see sometimes in years past. Correct. And there's not a coronation. It's not like it's a LeBron class where it's like, Hey, we're going to have the McDonald's game in Ohio. And it's just going to be like for him and kicking, he's going to be like kicking, you know, he's, he's the top guy. They have something to prove and they should again. like the NBA didn't really take, advantage of the all-star game like hopefully these guys are really locked in and they should be because they're going to be in front of nba scouts at the practices i know you're going to be there ani in houston mm -hmm. for the practices so so that should be good yeah so check out that voting on, on ballslife.com again more campbells or of columbus leads all those guys are from nationally nationally ranked teams so uh you know that we got 19 guys so go check out which guys got votes so i think for that not note we're going to wrap up i know chelsea we're going to get back at it i know you're very busy with your with your um, season. So we'll see when, when the availability is. So you guys know we're, we're the balls. I fall American came is coming back after a few years off because of COVID and other issues. So that should be Saturday, uh, May 6th. So many of these top guys hopefully will be there again. It's going to be a long postseason all-star circuit. We still have about two or three, about a month more of, of season for these guys to finish up and hopefully win state titles. I was not seeing like guys like Jackson Shellstad are trying to win their state title in Oregon. Uh, you know, Imhotep's trying to trying to win. Wheeler, like you said, if if, if, if Isaiah Collier's going to win, uh, Ani, Wheeler's probably got to win that class right. six state title in Georgia, things like that. So there's things to, still to be decided. So, well, again, we may miss a couple weeks here in the next couple months, you know, uh, just to forewarn. But, you know, we're going to get on as much as we can. We're going to preview the uh, W. Uh, the W season coming up. We're going to preview. Uh, Ani will have a, a recap of you from – McDonald's, and obviously we'll get ready for the NBA draft, the college March Madness, then the NBA draft. So that, that should be an exciting time. But I think for now, we're going to log off. We appreciate everybody tuning in to episode 155, and we'll see you soon.